We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Our guest is uh, Metro Nashville Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. The number seven three seven seven five eight seven. If you want to join in the conversation, hey, we're open. We'll talk to you. We'll take the calls, comments. We just heard from Taylor. Eric waited through the break. Let's take Eric. See what's on his mind. Eric, good morning. Hi, Eric. Hey, Mr. Nick Barris, Jim Shulman. It's a pleasure to talk to you guys. Sure. Nick, wish me luck. My surgery is. Uh, about 44 hours from now, I'm going to be getting ready for hip surgery. I'm right oh, not boy. looking forward to it, but it's Good something luck. I have to do. Good, so good uh, I appreciate it. Um, just uh, one quick thing on the convention. I'm to the point where, to me, either you have both uh, parties in town or neither. Uh, I'm not one side or the other on that. It's just I know it's so polarized. I don't want to get into that, but I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, but the main thing I called about was the uh, traffic issues for big events. And, of course, I'm talking about what happened this past Saturday night. I was not downtown. I would have loved to have been to SummerSlam for the big WWE event. But, you, of course, you had nearly 40000 for that. You also had, of course, the sounds that were playing at home hmm. that had their crowd at the same time. And you had the soccer stadium that was full that night, too. So, basically, you had three events where you had huge crowds. And all three of those events yeah, probably exactly. ended around about the same time, within about 30 minutes of each other, sometime between about 10.15 and 10.45 uh, that Saturday night. From what I've heard, I don't know about what happened, of course, at the baseball park or at the soccer deal, but I was hearing from friends who went to the SummerSlam deal uh, Saturday night, and, uh, you know, they got back to their cards fairly quickly, but there were people I heard it took them more than two hours to get out of downtown because I hear people say they sat in traffic for about 45 minutes or longer in traffic, and which means that a lot of people didn't get home to like between 1 and 2 in the morning. Sure, yeah, you and there were a lot of that. people uh, frustrated about that. Of course, you've got the Indy race next weekend as well as soccer on the same day Sunday. And I, it makes you imagine that uh, about traffic, how it was after the 4th of July deal when right. you had over 200,000 sure. people. But a lot of people have been complaining how we're going to just handle that future, especially with the talk of us building a new stadium and potentially having the Final Four, SummerSlam, and the Super Bowl, how we're going to deal with all the traffic issues and stuff. And that some have complained that we need a better traffic plan and just how we go about it. And I just wanted to ask the vice mayor, how do you propose that we're going to go about that for especially with the events we have going on now in Nashville, especially if we do get that big stadium and for future events. Guys, thanks for talking to me. Y'all take care and have a good day. I didn't know all three of those were happening. It reminds me of, I, <laughs> just to piggyback on it, and then you can, I don't know that there is an option. There was one night that I was uh, downtown. Um, I was downtown for the Rolling Stones concert, okay? And so I was coming from down. So you had the Rolling Stones playing over there at Nissan, okay? There was some big show happening at TPAC, and there was a, a big concert. I forget what other act or what was going on also over at uh, Bridgestone. I mean, all at once, okay? Not to mention it's on a weekend night or something like that so you have the normal crowd down when there's two or three or four different big events happening at once in any big city I, I you're gonna have traffic you may as well plan for it leaving the fourth of july took me a couple hours to get out of town yeah i don't know what you do what do you what do you do well uh, first of all eric good luck with your yeah. surgery yes um, right. the I think he makes a valid point. Um, so I was at the baseball game. Okay, okay. I was so at the sounds game. So uh, I didn't realize there was sounds, soccer, and of course you had the yeah. SummerSlam. We left in the eighth inning. Okay, <laughs> so, so it's a little early uh, to get out of there. Um, I know. I mean, we've had these discussions for a while. I know that the events are listed so people know, and I, I think the police department has that list, and they try to coordinate all the traffic or what's going on, but. You know, they also need to be taking care of our citizens and our tourists to make sure they're safe. Um, I, we've got a city that is, you know, that has grown tremendously and has all these major events, mm -hmm. and they all just go. And then somehow we have to try to figure out how to get people in and out of the city. It's like uh, it's like leaving a you know a Titans game. Sometimes yeah. it's like it just takes a while. But when you have three events going on at the same time or four what and then you get the regular downtown traffic it is difficult so yeah. i think i know that they review this every so often it may be that we just have to review it again but we don't have i mean it's not like we can just add another road mm -hmm. uh, or all of a sudden say okay we have a transit system that works i know that uh, with the soccer you can you know they have ways mm -hmm. of, of parking and then getting buses back and forth um i remember coming out an event one night after a soccer game released and the traffic was completely backed up again yeah. so 
I wish there was an I obvious wish there answer. Was, yeah, um, I wish there was but, mass transit. Now, on uh, 4th of July, don't they have Music City Star? At least if you're coming from the I-40 corridor, you could come in on the train and you would be right down there. And then afterward, I think they were taking you back. For some special events, they do that. And that's just a little taste of what it would be like if we did have mass transit throughout the city. Because then you don't have to drive. And if it's the train, yeah, you can walk there. You hop on and you're out of here. That's, that's what the really big cities that have that. That's the solution, of course. That's nowhere on the horizon for this city, unfortunately. Well, yeah, and it's so expensive. Boston, Chicago, or whatever, and go to a, a baseball game when it lets yeah. out. People either walk the L, or, yeah. they get, or they get on a, the subway, yeah. and then they go home. All the stops, and it's a breeze. You don't have to worry about parking and paying yeah, for it. Uh, but, but we don't have that. Yeah, so. we're not there at this point. Let's go to Ann. Ann, good morning. Hi, Ann. Hey, Ann. Good morning. Um, to big piggyback on Eric's call, um, but turn it to residential. I recently had the opportunity to meet with a, a local developer, major local developer, and was very impressed when they showed me what they planned to do to my neighborhood. And be, mainly because they took into account our infrastructure and had already done the research to see if some of these little side roads in my community could connect to Douglas and what could be done to alleviate traffic on Gallatin Road, Douglas and Ellington Parkway. My question is, is if a major developer can take the time to impress a community and go to the extent of including infrastructure, why can't our city and our code department regulate the growth with based on what can be done with the infrastructure because none was done in East Nashville. And we have high rise apartments, we have multi dwelling homes, we have every type of building going on in East Nashville. But not one road can be changed. So and Lim that is shameful. And let me ask you a question. Um, so uh, the developer you met with, don't need the name, but um, is there a zoning change requested? What's, why? Um, there had been, but unfortunately the road they had uh, researched to do that with, the, the homeowner on Douglas decided they could make more money selling their lot and allowing more to be built behind the existing yeah. home. And that will prevent a road from being connected. And to me, for them to have taken the time to do this when things weren't set in stone that this was even going to be a possibility, and they had already done the homework to see what could be done, why can't our codes and why can't our city council do that? Because it is. I hear it every day on Douglas when a siren gets slowed down because of traffic coming off of Ellington and Gallatin Road. And eventually it will cause somebody's life to be in danger because emergency vehicles are being slowed down by this, mm -hmm. much less the amount of traffic. Okay. And okay. Thank you. Yep. So what can the council do? I, I, I mean, you have developers that look into that and... Okay, well, a, a couple things. Okay. And I wish Ann was here because it would sure. be an interesting conversation. Yeah. So the reason I ask about whether something was required mm -hmm. gets into back and forth again uh, that we started this conversation with. Um, a developer may have needed a zoning change in this case. It sounds like that's what happened. So in order to... A uh, zoning change comes before the council. And people have a chance to say something, you know, if they mm -hmm. don't like it or if they like the project. So if if I were a developer, and, and I'm not, but if I were a developer and, and wanted people to support my project, the best thing for a developer to do is to go early and talk to people sure. and go, okay, this is what I want to do, or I'm interested in this, what do you think, you know, how would you change it? you know, what do you need? And so what you're doing is you're having a good discussion, which is okay. And yeah. so Anne's going, 
um, <clears throat> you know, I look at the, the traffic, how is the developer going to deal with that, particularly if you're building a lot of units, mm -hmm. how are you going to get people in and out? That's a really good thing to do because it allows the neighborhood to have <clears throat> excuse me, some impact yeah. And then you figure out where the developer wants to right, go. Okay, right. and the, but in this case, it doesn't sound like it went that far because something changed in the zoning process. Uh, so Anne says, why doesn't the council do it? So some members of the council can do it. It's a lot easier to do it when you have um, a developer asking for something because then you start working on trying to improve the nature of the mm -hmm. community. When a developer doesn't have to ask for permission to build some type of, mm -hmm. because of the zoning is already there, then they can get away and do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean that they all do it. The good developers should be working with the neighborhoods to make it work anyway. Right. Here's the last part of this whole conversation. And um, um, Ann said, you know, okay, can you can the developer can council make the developers do this type of thing? Right. If if we passed a bill or an ordinance that said before anything. Even if you have the zoning, you've got to come together with the neighbors and have community meetings and work on the infrastructure. That gets back to the legislature saying you can do certain things and not. We could try, but I'm not sure if that would hold with the legislature saying that even though you own that piece of property and you can zone, and you can do whatever you want, mm -hmm. council's going to come in and say you can't do anything until you have community meetings and talk about the infrastructure. That may get preempted in the legislature. Really good points that Ann makes. Um, We'll put it back on the table. Yeah, and that's just interesting. The whole thing about developers and what you described there, because you're right. If, if you or I were a developer, the first thing I would do is try. And I know sometimes you don't want to, but get with the community. Because they can make your life easier or hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and so often I see uh, there was a, in another county where something like this happened and they were trying to sneak in a quarry almost. And I, don't, I say sneak in, but meaning... There was no publicity on it, and they just showed up one day. Oh, it's going to be a quarry. And then hopefully no one picks up. But they did. And then all of a sudden, these signs. Instead, if they had maybe addressed it with the community, I don't think they would have accepted the quarry under any circumstance anyway. But it always helps, I would think, to communicate and not just steamroll. Transparency, communication, and it, just getting along. It is amazing you know? in this field, whether politics or what, how often people just stonewall. And then the thing festers as opposed to facing it straight up. I mean, if I was ever a public information officer, no matter how bad the situation is, I would try to be transparent and open. Yeah, you have to take your steps one step. Don't get ahead of yourself. But it's always better to be open. I, I just don't understand it. We'll take a break. When we come back, we've got some more phone calls, more of our conversation with Jim Shulman right after this. This is a Storm 5 weather update. For weather on the go, download the Storm Shield app. I'm News Channel 5 weekday morning meteorologist Nikki D. Ray. Did you wake up to some thunder overnight? It was loud, especially right along our Kentucky Tennessee state line. As the system drags its way southward, it is decreasing in strength. However, still some scattered showers being picked up on the Power 5 radars. Today, hot and humid. Yeah, this is what it feels like when you step outside. And I do anticipate temperatures to feel amplified not only today, but as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, yeah, hello, back to a southern summer that is filled with muggy air. Here is your seven-day forecast. Highs today will